Well, here we are. It is Friday again. It is uh, May 19th, 2023, and this is the weekly video. Uh, every Friday we go through, we take a look at what's been going on in the auction market, what's been happening in overseas, <clears throat> um, in, on eBay this week, live auctioneers, that kind of thing. Uh, as many of you know, we did a video yesterday on the upcoming Christie sales in Hong Kong. And if you haven't seen it, I hope you, you take the time to have a look at it. We took a different approach uh, yesterday. I sort of did it uh, as though I, if I could go to Christie's uh, uh, at the end of this month and Somebody said you could buy whatever you want. What would I buy? And I, I went through the things that caught my attention. And as I said in the video, there's no right or wrong uh, choice in any of that. It's all very personal if you're collecting. Uh, it just hinges on what you like. So I hope you I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, the next thing I want to bring up was that I've mentioned a few times. I've talked about it quickly. The Agut sale that's coming up um, uh, uh, just in a couple of days. What is it? About two weeks. This sale is going to take place on uh, when is this? Uh, June 1st and 2nd Asia Asia series at Agut's over in France. Uh, it, it's a nice looking sale. It's not an enormous sale. Here it is. The uh, catalog, of course, is on the uh, website if you want to go through it. And the lead lot of these two um, uh, Dragon Cups, they're very rare, uh, and they've, they've done an extensive write-up on them. Uh, they, they, they're uh, marking period. They're estimated at 100 to 200,000 uh, euros, and uh, here they are. Uh, they've provided a lot of good photographs on them, and apparently they've done a huge amount of due diligence on them to make sure they're okay and uh, they've uh, as I said in the catalog they've done a fairly extensive write-up with some comparisons and so forth uh, and then there's uh, some uh, things in there. The pieces were tied to C.T. Lou, the uh, successor, Frank Caro. Uh, so this is where they, they came from. And they were sold to Kledgeman uh, Gallery in New York. Um, and, then, um, and then on from there. Uh, so they've got good provenance, solid uh, dealer uh, history. Uh, because it doesn't get much better than uh, Frank Caro and uh, C.T. Lou uh, for those old pieces. And here they are. Uh, it's, a, it's a really, really nice cup. The only thing I wish they'd done was they didn't show a pair of the, the cups together um, in the photos for some reason. I don't know why they did that. Uh, normally, they, they'll, they'll show the pair of them standing in, in, in together, and they didn't bother. Uh, but that, that's, that's their choice, of course. And uh, I'm not sure why they did it that way, but they did it that way. And there's an enlargement of it right there. I was trying to get the thing to enlarge. It was not a, not agreeing with me. And there's the mark on the bottom. There's the Kledgeman uh, Gallery. And there's the Frank Caro sticker still on there. Um, two very reputable firms. Uh, Kledgeman was around after that in the, uh, in the, in the 70s and 80s. And uh, there's another shot of the bottom of the bowl. Uh, they're beautifully done. Beautifully done and very rare type. Uh, you don't see these these small dragon wine cups very often, and uh, as a result, they've got a hundred to two hundred thousand euro estimate. Uh, they measure nine centimeters in height, uh, or, or roughly just about uh, uh, four inches. They're fairly small, of course, but uh, very very unusual. And other things in the sale include this: there's a nice Tibetan seventeenth uh, century uh, bronze, gilt bronze, estimated at uh, eight to ten thousand euros. It looks about right. It's a very fine example. It's nicely done. Um, there it is. It still has some of the, the, the turquoise stones inset into it, as they often did. Uh, the surface looks to be in quite good condition. I don't see a, a lot of excessive wear. The gilding looks good on it, uh, and it's beautifully cast. So uh, that's something to worth uh, taking a look at. And there's a lot of things in this sale worth looking at. And they're not all pie in the You know, it's not all crazy prices. There's this, this very nice 18th century uh, terrine with cover, uh, estimated at three to 400 euros. Very pretty for Milrose enamels. Uh, it's the kind of thing you, uh, the 18th century buyers will like. There's a pair of these, these Kung Chi uh, uh, period uh, uh, vases with jars and Ormolu mounts. You'll notice that they, they had later mounts put on them, uh, probably in France or England. I suspect France. They, they did a lot of that. Uh, very nice looking pair of jars. Estimated at only three to 4,000 euros. And these are big. These are 50 centimeters tall. So they're, they're about uh, uh, 19 or 20 inches in height. So I think that that's that, that's a way under the money, unless they've been severely damaged. Uh, so I would I would look into those. I would ask for some additional pictures up close and so forth to get the thing checked out. But three to four thousand euros for these is a is a very very low estimate. They should be somewhere in the four to five thousand uh, euro range each. 
in this sale are eight I would think seven to ten thousand at least ten to fifteen thousand perhaps even uh, because they're, they're very desirable looking and they, they're in nice condition um, and so forth so you worth to take a look at those and then this this is sort of unusual this is what we talked yesterday in the video about biscuit wares Kung Shi biscuit wares well here, here's a, a very interesting one of, of a man um, carrying uh, lanterns and uh, they this is they are this is a big figure it's a foot tall uh, which is quite unusual for these that's a nice size that's a big one and the estimate is reasonable four to six thousand euros I think that's way under he's decorated in Femi Noir decoration um, there's a there's a good close-up of it right there uh, very nicely done I like the, uh, the, the, the the they used to use uh, pig bladders sometimes as lanterns and things and the, these are very they, I don't know what they, these look like they're probably made out of glass but uh, very nice figure really like him and it seems to be in good condition all intact and it's got this sort of l much later late 19th century Rococo uh, bronze uh, base added to it that, that's uh, probably it's either French or English um, it's not particularly great quality to be perfectly honest but the figure is very very nice I really like that and as I said four to six thousand euros that seems extremely reasonable and then lastly is this and, and if you're if you're if you're a, a, a Kang Shi buyer or, or a Japanese buyer and, and you're interested in these things this is sort of an interesting dish because it has a lot of the elements at a glance it has a lot of uh, sensibility to it of a Japanese Amari with the with the radiating panels and all this this is a Chinese example and this is part of one of the patterns that the Japanese ended up mimicking um, when they began making Amari export wares, and this is this was a good prototype for what they what they might have had some is something to work with as a as a guide, and uh, here you have the uh, the fish coming up out of the uh, ocean and uh, the flaming pearl and all that business, and these nice alternating panels. It's an interesting plate uh, from a from a study standpoint, and it's it's I think it's quite attractive. And, and rather rare and the estimate is very reasonable it's 21 centimeters in diameter about eight, a little over eight inches and it's estimated at just four to six hundred euros which I think is very reasonable for a Kung Shi uh, dish of that type um, and there's no condition uh, the, uh, there's there's a there's there's no condition report you have to kind of have to get a hold of them to get a condition report I think because they they don't seem to provide them uh, which they should you know auction houses should put the conditions in right away now the other thing I wanted to quickly go over was the Drew Wheat sale which took place I've mentioned it a few times um, we had all of this on the global pages uh, because a number of lots in this sale came from the Radcliffe collection and the Radcliffe is one of these very very old collections that was formed in England a hundred years ago and it's been published and it's been exhibited in, in different catalog, you know, different uh, different art shows. There's catalogs out there. And in this case, they had the catalogs, which was sort of interesting. And they had some original notes um, from Bluets and so forth about these pieces. Uh, and it had things like this is very nice Lang Yao red monochrome Kang Shi period bowl. Very attractive bowl. Nicely done. And it's sort of almost a peach bloom glaze to it very very attractive little bowl and then when you flip the thing over it's got the very typical uh the, the uh, kung shi copper red bowls often have a, a, a sort of a celadon crackle bottom on them it's one of the things you can look for and it, you see a nice little iron oxide line there running around the outside the foot looks good the glaze is nice it's not too glossy it's got a sort of a matte finish nice looking surface on this bowl and uh, there are the notes and there's the catalog it was published um in uh, 1965 in this case um, and then the 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 the, the and maybe this was where somebody somebody picked it up or somebody showed it or something I'm not sure uh, but at any rate that's in there and this ended up doing well it ended up selling for 34,000 uh, US plus the premium so that comes in at about forty five thousand dollars very strong price and this was kind of the result we were expecting because we'd looked at the sale and thought boy these are this is a nice old collection really was and then there was this this Sung Dynasty ribbed sort of Claire de Lune glaze bluish glaze Mei Ping vase very unusual vase I actually thought this would bring more I thought this was an absolutely fascinating piece of Sung wear uh, Sung de Jin I think is how they may have dated it um, no they called it Sung okay they called it Sung um, 
So, and a few other lots, I noticed they did that. They threw in Sung to Jin uh, as sort of, to, you know, to cover it because the, the, there isn't always a, a sharp dividing line. At any rate, this sold for $32,234 or around 45000 when it's all said and done against a six to eight, uh, 1,200 uh, 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 pound estimate. Um, this was, uh, the estimates were very, very low across the board. I think the... Uh, um, this bowl was estimated at four to six hundred and went for thirty four thousand. Um, this was estimated at six to twelve hundred pounds, went for forty five thousand. And then uh, over to this, the uh, large unusual Korean stoneware Maybong vase or, or plum, va plum vases, they're more typically uh, talked about. Goyo Dynasty, very unusual, really unusual piece of Korean uh, celadon ware. And uh, I talked to a number of people that had uh, inquired about it through the uh, uh, inquiry program on the site. And uh, I just, I, I kept saying it's going to probably bring 15 or 20 or so thousand dollars. It's a wonderful, rare example. If this had come up for auction in the 1990s, it would have brought six figures uh, back when this, the Korean business was so hot and crazy. But this was a, a, a nice old vase and, there, and it's still got the Radcliffe sticker on the bottom and the Antique Dealers Association label that it had when it was shown. There it is. Beautiful, beautiful uh, piece of Mei Ping uh, wear. Nice looking thing. There it is. There it is. Lots of photos. And uh, everybody loved it. And it ended up selling for 18000 uh, US plus premium. So again, you're, you're, you're up around uh, uh, twenty-four or $5,000 by the time it's all done. All right. And then the next piece over was this, the Cloisonne <clears throat> um, uh, three-footed, uh, well, it's a, a cloisonne dish on stand. Nice old stand. Good-looking piece of uh, probably, this looks Ming to me. Did they date it even? Uh, oh, they did date it. Ming Dynasty. Okay. Uh, ended up selling for $12,398. And this is the way the sale went. Everything was very, very strong. You have this nice, um, this is dated. They dated this Northern Sung or Jin. Uh, a nice Junyao Chinese dish. I had a few inquiries about this. I said it's a wonderful dish. Um, it actually brought more than I thought. I was thinking ten or fifteen thousand, and uh, it ended up selling for uh, well over that. Went for twenty four thousand plus premium. So you, now it ended up being at around thirty thousand dollars for this dish. But it was a very fine example, lovely example, good condition, nice color. The color on this was very, very appealing and beautifully potted, neatly finished on the back. And uh, as I said, thirty, thirty three, thirty four thousand dollars for that. And then um, and, the, and, and the sale just went on like that forever. <clears throat> there are all kinds of things and you can go over and you can go to live auctioneers if you want and, and find Drew Eats and uh, look at the past sale and you can go down. The numbers were very, very strong. Very, very strong all the way through. But these are all interesting pieces. There was this very wonderful little Korean melon-shaped wine pot um, with, a, with a repair to the spout and so forth. Very desirable though. Ended up selling for $2,800, 2,800 pounds plus premium against an estimate of 100 to 150 uh, euros. Uh, and it's, it, it, what's interesting about this, it illustrates how little um, uh, estimates really mean uh, much of the time. People look at estimates and say, well, why, why don't they know what they bring? Well, they just don't, all right? And, and the most expensive piece in the sale was this. I should, I should mention this. Um, is this Celadon, hold on a minute, not Celadon, Cloisonne. There it is, this really nice Cloisonne pomegranate box. Um, and they had a certain restrictions on this because it was a very rare type Jundi, uh, 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 Jundi uh, Mark and period Cloisonne. Estimated at just six to 10,000 euros, sold for 285,000 plus premium. So about 350 or $60,000 by the time it's done. But a very rare pattern, very rare piece of uh, Cloisonne, wonderful box. Here's the, uh, the back of it. Uh, I can't read what that sticker says. Chinese. Oh, it was in the Chinese exhibit. And uh, everybody loved it. It's a nice, wonderful little double box. It had it had a little bit of damage, though. You have to keep in mind, a little bit of damage over in here, in, in through here. Didn't bother anybody too much, apparently, uh, because it's rare and very, very early, and there's the mark on the bottom. Uh, and so this made it a whole other thing when once it develops that mark. Once they come up with that mark on there, and uh, off it was. Off it went to the races. All right, now, um, 
The next thing I wanted to mention very, very quickly uh, were some results from uh, Malay Brothers, which was also on the global member pages. Uh, they had a, a vase that there was a lot of a lot of conversations about. We had one or two two inquiries about it. Uh, is this very interesting Claire de Lune Guform vase with a Chin Lung mark on it. And it was estimated at just $1,500 to $2,500. As you can see, it went for a lot more than that. Sold for $370,000 plus premium. So again, you're up around four hundred and fifty dollars to 500000 half a million dollars for it. Uh, here's the bottom of it. Uh, we thought it looked awfully good. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't think of a, 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 I couldn't see really a problem with it. And uh, we had told a few people that it would bring, I think we said 200 to 250,000 anyway, and could very well bring more because these are monochromes, of course, and monochromes right now are, are very hot with collectors. Uh, they really seem to be locking in on them. And uh, this was a, an awfully nice looking piece. And it looked, it actually looked too good to be a fake. So I wasn't too worried about it. Uh, and it did great. It did great. And the rest of the Malay sale did well, too. Uh, they had this. This was one of the nicest silks I'd seen in a while. I thought this was a wonderful piece of silk. Ended up selling for $2,700. Beautiful color balance. And it, it was interesting in this because they used yellows and dark reds and blues. And it all worked together so well. It all worked together really, really well, I thought. Um, all the way down in this big gold shout character in the center and the bottom. $2,700. And uh, then there was this nice set of five um, early 19th century uh, Canton enamel uh, on, on, on copper uh, dishes. They had a little wear to the centers. They had some wear to them in a few places. The ones in the back looked like they were in better shape, but they, showed, they did show very clearly that some of them had wear and uh, they still did very, very well. They ended up selling for 1300 plus premium, just a little over the high estimate of $1,200. But nice looking Canton enamel wares and rather unusual, rather unusual type. All right, now uh, head on over to eBay, what was going on last week. And there's some, some good lots coming on there right now um, uh, for this coming week. So stick around for that. By the way, the problem is still ongoing with eBay. Many of you have probably noticed when you click the link, um, you get this thing that says the item has been removed. Uh, this isn't our site. It's all over eBay. This is a big problem right now. Um, I was actually talking with uh, somebody over there and one of the, uh, the, the community boards who's involved with this and said it's not fixed and because they, they kept saying the problem's been fixed. And uh, it's costing eBay a lot of money. The, but the advantage here is that, is that because um, you can't get to the things very readily, uh, <laughs> it poses an opportunity if you stick to it, uh, because if you can get the page to load, you can get a bid in. But a lot of people right now can't get, can't, they're having trouble getting access to the items. And you have to try, sometimes you have to try two or three, four or five times to get the page to load. Otherwise, you get that message saying that the item has been removed. Um, and it's not removed. It's not removed. It's just, it's just this is a glitch in eBay's system. Uh, they need to pay their tech people better, I think, what it amounts to. But any rate, so if you encounter that, that's that's what's going on. All right, now over to this. This was that painting last week I, I, I talked about, and I pointed out. I said this is a Japanese painting. But they've got it listed as Chinese, and uh, but it's nicely done, and I love horse paintings. And uh, in the end, it did pretty well. I think it was at about ten bucks last week when it first went up, and it ended up going for two hundred and forty dollars, which is fine. And this is a nice picture. Roundhouse Antiques had this, and it, it looked great framed. I hope one of you bought it, and you get it into a frame. All right, and then over here, this, the uh, 18th century uh, China Trade Export Tankard. This is a very well-known type, and it, all those of you who have been collecting for any length of time have seen this pattern many, many times. And this one did well. It brought $415 because it was in such nice condition. The condition of this was quite good uh, from what I could see. Uh... There we go. The, you'll notice that the, the cobalt is a very good quality of cobalt. Had a very lovely handle on here. This is a beautiful handle. And um, I don't see any repairs or any damage to it. I'm just checking it over here. The bottom of it looks fine. That side looks fine. That side looks fine. And in the end, it did very well. It brought $415. All right. And then over to this. Uh, the page is a little slow to load today. Hold on a second. Okay, there we go. 
we had to make an adjustment. All right, and then there was this, this uh, uh, rather nice uh, Ch Chinese silk with dragons on it. It was, it was not in perfect condition. It had some pulls and tears and so forth that you can see down here in the corner and uh, over here in this corner and so forth. But the, it, was, it was beautifully done on a gold ground with, with these blue dragons circling around a central dragon. Very nicely done. And uh, everybody seemed to like it a lot. Ended up selling for $475. Uh, and this, that was sold by Carpe Diem Pickers out in um, um, uh, Mobile, Alabama. And then this. This was, I think, one of the most wonderful little buys of the week. And I get back to the old leave a bid. All right. This was a nice, it was a very small, but Ming Dynasty seal depicting um, Du Fu riding his mule. And this was a nice little seal. Beautifully done. Um, there's the bottom of it. Uh, late Ming. Good patina, nice, there is a good idea how big it was in his hand. Uh, this was a terrific little bronze. And uh, somebody bought this for under $100. And this, again, is why you leave a bid. If you like old bronzes, just leave bids. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, and this one ended up selling for just $115 for a seal. Nice scholar's table object in a very unusual form. Um, you know, those of you that collect, this is the kind of thing, just, you know, leave three or $400 on things like this because you never know, you might get it for $115.39. <laughs> that was a great buy. And this was a pretty good buy, too. A Tibetan um, a Buddha, Ming Dynasty, very nice patina on it, sort of a ferocious face, seated in the lotus. Uh, nice example. Good color. The color on this was really nice, very rich, very deep, um, and, and a little bit of a lighter areas on high points were rubbed a bit, uh, but very nicely done. There's the bottom of it. And uh, the size of this, it wasn't enormous. Um, it was, uh, let's see here, uh, 17th century. They always hide their dimensions. I wish they didn't do that. There it is, six inches tall, um, roughly, um, or, or, or excuse me, eight inches tall. Wasn't a great big one, obviously, but it was a nice one. And um, I like that a lot. Ended up going for $471, which I think was very inexpensive. And then you have this, this nice Tibetan gilt bronze Buddha, uh, 18th century, good gilding, nice condition and so forth, on, mounted onto this little stand. It's been clamped onto the stand. I like the way they put those little straps on there. The stand is late 19th century. That's a late stand. But the figure was quite charming and quite nice and um, well cast, very smooth finish on it. Ended up going for $4,526. And then over here to this is 18th century. Uh, this was a uh, Stanmore House Antiques. They had a few nice things up last week. Very nice quality. And one of them was the, this uh, quadrifoil uh, dish. Uh, it measured around eight or nine inches in width or in, at, at the widest point. It wasn't a great big thing, but it was beautifully done. It had a very appealing shape. There's a nice soft blue glaze, classic 18th century uh, finish on this. Uh, and somebody, somebody been able to pick it up for just $384. That was a nice piece of 18th century export wear. And uh, they also had this one up in the same sale, the same batch went up. And this was also a good buy. This was 39 centimeters. This was a big piece. This was a 17 inch plate. And somehow this went through for just $518. And I remember a few months ago, there was one very similar to this that went through uh, eBay and sold for around $1,200. Uh, so th this, was, this represents a pretty good value, I think. This was a nice plate. It's a very collectible form, the, the shape, uh, with, the, with these shaped rims and so forth. It's very finely worked inner uh, diaper border going around the Cavetto. And then the, you have the peonies and rocks and so forth and the balustrade in a very classic uh, export uh, uh, manner, um, $518. That was a good buy. That was a really, really good buy, assuming it was in perfect condition because it looked like it was in perfect condition. And then there was this, and a lot of people looked at this. I know a few people got a hold of me. They said, is this Chinese? Because it does look a lot like European porcelain of the 18th century. Uh, this, is an, this is a Chinese export uh, picture. There's the bottom of it, Chinese foot, uh, Chinese enamels. Uh, but but looks a lot like uh, like some pieces of mycin you might have seen, uh, that kind of thing. And uh, it was because they by, by, by the 18th century, the Chinese were, were getting models and things that they wanted um, for the European market um, and making them and sending them back. And in, in the, in the Europe, in, in the, in the, there was a lot of back and forth with designs in Chinese porcelain back then and, and uh, between the kilns and what was wanted in Europe. 
And uh, this was a nice example. And I think this was an outstanding buy. Uh, somebody picked this up for 300 and uh, what is this? $377 for this very unusual uh, sort of European flavor, uh, European taste teapot with gilt handle and gilt spout and gilt finial. Uh, very nicely decorated. This is a good example and uh, unusual form. And that's the thing you always want to look for. And then this was a nice little one of these, again, uh, as, you, as many of you know, that in the, in the 19th, at the end of the 19th century, early 20th century, uh, there was this fashion of taking things like jade belt hooks here and then getting the, uh, the maybe a big plaque off of a rue scepter or something and then repurposing them. Because often what happens is that the uh, rue scepters get damaged and they end up with just the jade bits, the three, usually there's three pieces of jade on a Ruyi, Ruyi head scepter, one on the top, one in the middle, one on the tail. And um, so they would, they would recirculate them by uh, mounting them, in this case, into a mirror. Um, and there's the front of it, there's the mirror part. And they set it up It's a very well-known uh, style that was very, very popular uh, in the West. People loved to buy these. And this was a really nice one. And uh, the the peach was in particularly the belt the belt hook is was nice but it was it's probably a a, a thousand dollar belt hook, but this big plaque on the top was wonderfully carved with the peach on it and the auspicious peach, uh, especially for the 18th century fans is is very very symbolic, and uh, somebody paid forty one hundred dollars for this but I don't think that's insane I think that's pretty good, and then there was this this was the 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 uh, 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 Collectibles guys over in the uh, the, ne the Netherlands, um, you know, Chinese ceramics and collectibles, and they have some nice things. They always have things up there. Shangri La antiques. You're, a lot of you are familiar with them, and uh, they had this Kangxi Ho Ho boy up. Uh, nice looking little figure, uh, and these are these these were extremely collectible uh, 20 years ago. Maybe they're not as much anymore. Uh, but th these were always highly sought after by Chinese porcelain collectors. And uh, this one went up and it did okay, but it didn't bring bring what I thought it might bring. Sold for $761. And uh, it had decent size to it. It wasn't, uh, how big, what was it? What was it? Uh, I want to make sure I get the dimensions right. 11 inches high. It was just a hair under a foot tall. That was a nice piece of Kang Shi porcelain for under $1,000. Um, it should, should, I think, I always thought it should, it should bring um, 12 to 1500 all right, and then this, the, the little mug, that wonderful um, um, friendship mug that we were uh, looking at last week and talking about because I thought it was so interesting. Piece of export ware, obviously for the American market with the uh, federal uh, star here in the center and the monograms and the swag and all this. Very nice piece of uh, Americana export to America export. Here's the back of it. And I think somebody paid a very fair price for it. This was, a, a, I think, a good buy. If you collect unusual things and interesting things, this was one of them. And ended up going for $680. Nice looking thing. And uh, then this, the silver form um, Canton 18th century with Mandarin figures porcelain serving dish. Uh, nice looking little boat there. That's good looking. And uh, somebody got it for $660. It was a good, good thing. And it was a good size, too. Keep in mind, this thing was 13 inches long. It was over a foot in length, um, which makes it quite large uh, for one of those. And then the Rondell. Here's a, sort of a strange thing. This thing had only two bids, but I think it had a fairly high opening bid. So maybe, maybe it scares people off. I'm not a fan of high opening bids on auction lots. I think it's a, it can be often a fatal mistake because what happens is just those of you that sell on eBay need to know that if you put an item up, and you think it's going to bring a thousand dollars, and you put an opening bid on it of two or three hundred, which sounds reasonable if it's going to bring a thousand. The problem is, is that eBay's algorithm, if it sees an item coming up, it does a couple of things the second it sees it listed. It checks to see what similarly described things have started for and finished for, and it watches very carefully for bid activity. And if there's no bid activity on it, it doesn't get a lot much push from the Cassini algorithm that eBay uses. So if it doesn't get a bid until the sixth or seventh day out of a ten-day auction, you're, you're way down the you're way down the, the the algorithm's pecking order, so to speak. You're, you're you're way down at the bottom. The idea is you want to get bids immediately on lots, uh, and that's why um, uh, when we sell things on there, even if we know they're going to sell for five or ten thousand, fifty thousand dollars, we start them at nine ninety nine or five ninety nine with no reserve. All right, I don't want people looking at the, the reserve hasn't been met signs because that's a turnoff and we know that it's going to eventually get there. 
We know that it'll get there and, and nine times, nine, 99 times out of 100 it does. But it takes a little courage. But what it does do is that it gives us immediate bids on items that we put up. And eBay immediately recognizes, oh, it's getting bids. Good thing. And then they will, they will help promote it a bit more. Uh, and if you haven't seen the Cassini video that we did on our channel here, and you sell on eBay, you really should go and watch it because it goes through the whole thing. I spent quite a bit of time talking to some folks at eBay about it before we did it, learned all about it, and the importance of filling out all the boxes um, that you have at your disposal when you go to sell something on eBay. All those little detail boxes, make sure you check off every last one of them because that is what the eBay algorithm is based off of. It runs off of that, the, those, those details and you want to give it all the information you can in order to get successfully promoted on the site. And anyway, this thing I think had a fairly high starting bid. Let's take a look. I'm just curious at this point. Yeah, it's starting starting bid of eight hundred ninety nine dollars. All right, and that's why it only had two bids, and the and the seller probably would have gotten a bit more had he started it at five dollars and let it climb up because it, it would have it could have well brought. We many of you are looking at this thing. We've had we've seen these before, and they've brought twelve to fifteen hundred. But you can sort of shoot yourself in the foot by having high starting prices. Don't do it. It's a mistake. It's nerve wracking, but it, 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 it while it's going on, but in general, it's a huge mistake. Um, and then there were these, this pair of blue to hue uh, uh, dishes, 19th century blue to hue plates with inscriptions on them. Nicely done. Blue to hue, as many of you know, are, are, are very collected these days. And this one's uh, closed at $1,187 for the two of them. And these were at big plates. They were 6.9 inches. These are fairly small plates. Uh, so so it's those that market still seems good. And if you like blue to hue, the Agut sale has quite a bit of it on the front end of the sale. It just, it just made me think of that. Um, they've got a number of good blue to hue pieces over there. So if you buy that sort of thing, um, check it out. All right, now what's coming up on eBay? Uh, Juice1499, a.k.a. Chamberlain Antiques, has a bunch of stuff that's up there. He has a number of uh, nice-looking jades up there. They'll be in the newsletter this week. He has this very nice... Um, um, uh, probably first half of the 19th century, Rose Mandarin or Rose Canton, um, uh, Tureen, and uh, under tray and so forth. It's up to $355. It'll probably get to up to eight, eight or 900, I suspect, but it's seven to 900 by the time it's over. Uh, but it's a good looking one, nice one. If you need one, that's a good one to buy. And then this is up, this isn't, this isn't Chamberlain. This is another seller over in the UK, but this is one of the most, most wonderfully decorated clobbered, crack dishes I've ever seen. I really like this. Um, this, of course, was all blue and white when it was first made. And then it went to Europe and it got, uh, as they call it, clobbered, where somebody would redecorate it and add colors and enamels to it because colors, were, colored and porcelains were so popular. And uh, this was a beautiful one. And I love the red they use. The red and the green all seem to work really, really well on this. This is a nice piece of uh, uh, wear. Um, and uh, here's the back of it, and they did this sort of whimsical uh, mark on there, which is nonsensical. It's got a hairline in it. And then they went over and, and, and covered, colored in all these areas with reds um, over, the, over what was just before, just underglazed blue. At uh, any rate, it's up to $73. It closes in four days. And if you like really interesting, unusual things, you might want to look at that. And it will be in the newsletter this week. All right. And if you haven't signed up for the newsletter page, you, you want to do that. And that way you, you, you can take a look at it the minute it goes up on Friday night. There's a sign up form on, um, on the newsletter page itself. Um, let's see here. I'll show it to you. Those of you who don't know where it is. Uh, I know most of you do. This is just for folks that might just be finding the site the new users there we go um, when you come to the newsletter page uh, at the at the top of the bit amount home page on the right hand side if we can get the thing to load it's very slow to, slow to load today i'm not sure why there we go there's the sign up form right there um and you just click that give us your email address and we'll send you a notification when the when the global pages i mean when the newsletter page is updated each friday 
All right, and then you can see stuff like that. And uh, Josh also has up this very nice grisaille uh, dish with a European lady seated in the middle with gilding and boats in the background. Nice, nice example. Those of you who collect these are familiar with this pattern. It's been seen um, on, on dishes and seen on tea sets. Uh, this one's up to $59. It'll get up there eventually. It should, it should go to three to 400 before it's done or maybe a little bit more. As soon as we see these sell for 500 But it's a nice looking plate. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, check that out. But there's a slew of things on there, but we'll have them on the site. And then there's this nice, um, uh, they call this a rank badge Kesey panel. It's not a rank badge. It's just a big silk hanging with dragons um, and wave patterns. And then these rondelles and then more dragons at the other end. Nice piece of silk. And silk is still strong. We're seeing good results for silks. And then this, a pair of uh, big spittoons. Uh, or they, or Jada or, or vases or whatever whatever they're calling them this month because uh, they keep they, people just keep changing but they, they don't let people don't like to say spittoon I guess but that's really what they are I guess and uh, but nicely enameled uh, probably just into the second half of the 19th century uh, but beautifully done very fine detail nice looking things and uh, right now they're up to a thousand twenty five dollars they're supposedly in superb condition. Um, uh, early Chinese export and so forth. Um, they're calling them early 19th century. I don't think they are. I think they're sort of mid 19th century is probably more accurate, but they're really nice examples and they're probably worth around 1200 a piece anyway. This, this, this pair should go for two to 3000, I think. Maybe, maybe possibly even a little bit more because it's a pair and you don't see pairs of these all that often. And then over here to this, another one of these jade. This is uh, Josh Chamberlain's, uh, uh, again, this is one of the jades he has up. I thought it was one of the nicest ones. Uh, this very, very nice plaque with lotuses all over it. And again, it probably came out of a rue scepter. It needs a cleaning. It is extremely dirty. Uh, but uh, that's fine. That's a nice estate condition. That's what that's a state saying. Estate condition is a euphemism for filthy. Um, <laughs> uh, but this is nicely carved, and this certainly looks to be an 18th century carving. And I'll be very interested to see what it brings. But if you like 18th century jades, this is a nice one. Um, he's got some notes in here on it. I didn't bother going through them. Um, there is mutton fat jade plaque, uh, so forth in relief. Um, sold for. Fifteen dollars back in the dark ages. I guess that's what it is. It's priceless from an old auction or something. Um, doesn't say. Um, doesn't say. Anyway, uh, it's a great looking little jade plaque. So if you like jade, do check that out. All right, and that's sort of it for the week. Uh, there's been, as you see, there's been a lot going on. They got the Christie sales coming up. You got the Agut sale coming up. Uh, uh, the Drew Eats auction was very successful. Malay Brothers down um, outside of New York and New Jersey had a very successful auction. Those of you who don't know Malay Brothers, by the way, they they are very good dealers. Um, um, I think they get stuff. I think they get spillover stuff, sort of in the way Stair Gallery was always. People always said Stair Gallery gets a lot of things from um, um, I think Sotheby's. Um, things that Sotheby's can't take or, or it isn't quite what they want and they'll, they'll have stair galleries sell it. Um, they, that's not the only place stair gallery gets their stuff. There's an old company. They've been around for years. But I think they have a strong enough reputation that Sotheby's feels comfortable in recommending them to people. And I think Malay Brothers has a similar relationship with one of the other auction houses. I'm not sure which one, but they seem to get that sort of thing. Um, and that's always been the talk in the business anyway. And they, and they are well-liked guys. So uh, they're, 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 they're among the good guys, I think, in general. Well, I've bought from them and had very good luck. So at any rate, uh, I bought one of my favorite paintings, actually, from them, a Chinese painting very early one um and that's it for the week all right give us a thumbs up leave a comment uh if it's something you'd like to see uh let let me know on here we're always looking for as you know we are always on a quest for things that are interesting to talk about and uh have a great weekend summer's here we've got some guests here from um uh, from italy visiting us for a few days we're gonna have lobsters tonight um my 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 wife and they went out they're looking for um i think we're getting 15 two and a half pound lobsters something like that a whole barrel of them, uh, and we're gonna have, eat it right outside on the on the terrace. So it'll be a lot of fun. All right, have a great weekend, everyone, and uh, I'll see you next week. Okay, bye bye.